بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله the almighty says in the quran and allah allah is the one who created you in a state of weakness then gave you strength after weakness then after strength gave you weakness and gray hair he creates what he wills servants of allah this beautiful ayah allah azza wa jal summarizes our lives on earth this life that we at times seem to consider and think that it is endless however it is not and this is the inevitable fact you are born you live and you will die no one escapes this fate not even our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam yet allah gives us signs after signs so that we would be aware of what awaits us if you look at this magnificent sign of allah azza wa jal you would find that life is in stages we are born weak vulnerable fragile ignorant unable to do anything but look at us now allah says in the quran and allah has brought you out of your mother wombs knowing nothing every one of us was born in such a phase and state and it is allah azza wa jal who gave us what we are having at the moment the young becomes or grows old the weak becomes strong the ignorant starts to learn and all of this is from allah azza wa jal however this stage of puberty this stage of youth is prolonged until we are deceived by it so we think that it is going to last forever and we live life to the fullest we enjoy life to the max we take everything that we can lay our hands on whether it is halal or haram so we drink from the cup of this dunya until we are intoxicated once we are addicted to this dunya once we have it running in our bloodstream then the warners of allah start coming in and the first warner to us is reaching the age of 40. allah says in the quran till when he attains full strength and reaches 40 years this means that you will reach your max you will reach your climax in health in physical and mental abilities when you reach 40 and if you reach the peak there's nowhere else for you to go except downwards now this is the first warner but who pays attention to it then we find that a number of warners keep on coming to us from allah warning us beware of what is happening to you beware of where you are going to we find that we're getting fatigue we're becoming tired we we forget things we're not as strong and as good as we used to be not only that we find that grayness is invading our hair and our heads like zakaria said as allah mentioned in the quran my lord indeed my bones have grown weak and feeble and gray hair has spread on my head so these are a number of warners from 40 until you reach the age of 60 yet another warner comes to you which is attaining the age of 60 the prophet says the average age of my followers of my ummah is between 60 and 70 and seldom you will find people who would pass that so if you reach the age of 60 what should i do keep on doing what you've been doing for the past 60 years 
Ibn al-Jawzi, may Allah have mercy on his soul, says, once you reach the age of 60, then you must start to pack your bags because you've reached your destination or you're almost there. And every single day that the sun rises over you, this is a new gift. This is a new blessing from Allah Azza wa Jal. This is borrowed time. It is for you to utilize it and Allah Azza wa Jal will hold you accountable to it. And the more you become weak, the more you become weaker, the more you should strive in pleasing Allah and offering as many good deeds as you can because you never know when it will be over. Servants of Allah, if you reach the age of 60 onwards, you can feel a lot of things fighting inside of you. And shaitan utilizes this. Shaitan plays well on this. Because when you reach this age, you feel depressed. You are a bit cynical. You are not as positive as you used to be. And that is why shaitan tries his level best to get you at that moment. Why? Because after you die, he has no power over you. But while you're still living, while you're still breathing, he is waiting for the right moment for you to flip. And once you do, this is what he wants. A true believer is not like that. A true believer is a real vantage. The older he gets, the better he is. And the Prophet wasallam gave you the glad tiding. And he told us that the best among you are those who live long and do good deeds. And the worst among you are those who live long and do bad deeds. May Allah Azza wa Jal protect us all. So everyone among us who has reached the age he's in, he should be grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal that he made him reach that age, whether young or old. And the older you become, you should monitor your behavior, the way you treat others, the way you deal with others. So if you are improving and doing good deeds, know that Allah Azza wa Jal loves you. And do not think of getting old as a burden or as a trial from Allah because Allah doesn't love you. On the contrary, the more you live, the more good deeds you do, the more Allah loves you. In Sunan Ibn Majah, Talha ibn Ubaidillah, you all know him, may Allah be pleased with him. One of the ten heaven-bound companions of the Prophet ﷺ. One of the most beloved companions to the Prophet ﷺ. He says that, I saw in a vision, I slept and I saw in a dream. And before he saw that dream and he told us about that dream, he is telling us that two men from a region up east came and reverted to Islam. They accepted Islam. So they were brothers. One of them was much better than his brother in worship. So he prays a lot of nights and he fasts a lot of days and he does a lot of good things, gives in charity. And this particular person, the one who does good deeds, went to battle and was martyred in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jalla. So he's a shaheed. So what more do you want? He's a companion. He does a lot of good deeds and he died as a shaheed. One year later, his brother died normally, naturally. So he said, I went to bed one night and I saw in a dream that I and these two men were outside of paradise waiting for the gates to open. So the gates of paradise were opened and they summoned, they called the one who died a year after his brother. The one who did not do a lot of good deeds, the one who was not martyred and it was closed and after a while the doors were open again and the other person the martyr was admitted 
Talha says, I wanted to go in, and the angels told me, it's not your time yet. And I woke up. So I spoke about my dream to everyone around me, and people were shocked and astonished. How is it a person who dies as a martyr, and he did so many good deeds, he was much, much more enthusiastic than his brother, yet his brother is admitted to paradise before him? There's something wrong. And this dream reached the Prophet ﷺ and he heard what the people were talking about. So he called them and he said, what are you uh, 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 wondering about? They said, oh Prophet of Allah, he dies a year after this martyr and he didn't do as many good deeds as he did, yet he is admitted to paradise first. So the Prophet said ﷺ, how long did he live after him? And they said, one year. He said, did he fast Ramadan? They said, yes. How many days did he fast? How many prayers did he offer? How many prostrations did he give? More than the man who was martyred a year ago. By Allah, what's between them is like what's between the heavens and the earth. One year of living does the difference between a normal person and a martyr, which indicates that you should value every single minute that you live and consider it as a gift, a blessing, and a favor from Allah. I say what you hear and I seek Allah's forgiveness. So ask Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive me and you as well. A lot of us, when we grow older, we become cynical. We become depressed. We become easily agitated. We become too sensitive. We become grumpy to those who are around us. And unfortunately, this is a trial from Allah Azza wa Jal to both ends, to the recipients and to the elders. However, Islam, as usual, is the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal, and you have to be proud of that. Islam excels as usual in all fields of life. It does not address a particular field of life. It addresses life itself. And Islam excels in asking us as Muslims and teaching us as believers how to deal with such a segment of our society. Unlike the disbelieving West or East, who treat them and consider them as insects that should be stepped on, the elders have no reason to live. They've consumed all of their choices. So why are we treating them this well? Why are we doing this and that for them? They should leave. They brought us up, it's their duty. Now, they should not ask anything of us. We should not do anything for them. This is not how we do in Islam. Islam honors, Islam values this age where this elder has reached. And the more he lives, the more honor we give to him. Not necessarily being a parent, not necessarily being someone we know. Islam orders us to respect and honor the elders, whether they are locals or expatriates. And we have a big problem with this. And this is not definitely the time nor the language to address this issue. But we bring our children up in a way that makes them behave as they do. Islam tells you this is not the way. You as a Muslim, it's your duty to respect any elder, even if he's a kafir. And if he's a Muslim, it becomes a must, whether he speaks your language or not, whether he's from your ethnicity or not, whether he is from you where you live or not. The Prophet says, والسلام, he is not from us who does not honor and respect the elder. He's not from us. He's not from among us. He's not a proper Muslim. So this is what Islam tells you. It is a sign in Islam 
that you respect and honor the elder. It's a sign of how you were brought up. Why do you say to the janitor who cleans your office as a general manager, why do you call him uncle? Because this is how you were brought up. You had good family. You had good Muslims uh, as parents, good practicing Muslims. But when you do the opposite, this shows the lack of Iman in your heart and it shows the lack of discipline in bringing you up. We hear a lot of bitter complaints from the elders. We see how people misbehave in our countries, in our localities with the elders. And this shows you that there is something wrong. There is an error in our upbringing. It's good for you to pray in the first row. It is unacceptable for you to treat an elder in a bad way. By Allah Azza wa Jal, it's even worse when this elder is a father or a brother or an uncle. And there are cases you know of, of how people treat the elders in their family. And it is not a proper Muslim who does this. And you should doubt your Iman if you have this in you. But this has a two-way streaming. So as youngsters, we have to respect the elders. But what about the elders themselves? The elders themselves must have mercy on the youngsters. And they should also not burden those who are around them. So being grumpy, being depressed, being agitated all the time is not a positive thing. This means that you as an elder lack the full trust, dependence and reliance on Allah Azza wa You don't have tawakkul. And that is why in ideal societies, in our homes, you find the elders being a beacon of wisdom and experience. The youngsters go to seek knowledge and to seek guidance. And the elders give that willingly and happily. And this is where you have the bond between the Muslims in the Muslim societies and families. The older you get, always remember that Allah loves you and that's why he's prolonging your age. So try your level best to offer as much as you can of good deeds. I give you the glad tidings to those who are old and become old in Islam. I give you the, the glad tidings of Allah's forgiveness and of Allah's pleasure because you have worshipped all these years seeking his forgiveness and seeking his pleasure. And you have to remember that deeds are judged by their conclusion, by their endings. So it is a shame living 60 years, 70 years, and then you do sins and you die doing them. So what's past is past. Try your level best to do well, to worship Allah, to be 24-7, giving charity, worship unto Allah, making dhikr, offering prayer on time, being kind to your spouses, your sons and grandchildren, being kind to your neighbors, being a true practicing Muslim. So when death comes, it would come while you are in a perfect state for receiving death. فأهل الوفاء كلون السحاب وحسن الربيع وماء المطر مقامهم فوق رأس الجبال وفوق الرواب وعند القمر ويا من تحب غياب الوفاء رأيتك تهوى غياب البصر